that's actually an interesting segue to to just to build on your your introductory remarks regarding the the problems with empathy. Um, if I so last night my 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 six month old daughter decided not to sleep and she was one in the morning and she knew I had a conference today. I don't know how she knew, but she knew it. And Babies are very wise. Yes, and I think they're moral. Some some very in, impressive uh, person wrote a just baby. So Paul, that's another one of your books. That's a plug if for for those who don't know it. Um, so she knew I had this conference um, and she was crying. And I was just thinking if I were to empathize with you, little baby, I would be exhausted, right? Like, so maybe we can start to get into what are the specific problems with empathy? When we, when I wanted to help my baby cry, she was really struggling. She was stressed out about something. Um, why should I not have empathized yeah. with her? What, what are some of the, some of the issues there? Good. I, I, I think about this a lot. At, regarding parents, I'm, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a manager, but I, I am a parent. My my boys are now uh, in their twenties and off to the world. But but those are exactly the questions. And here's what you do want to have towards your baby: you want to care about your baby. You'd be an awful parent if you said, "Oh, who cares? She's crying. Big deal." That's you kind of you want to love your baby. That's one thing. You also want to understand your baby as best you can. You know, your theory seems to be that she was crying to make you tired for the next day. That's a good theory. Um, maybe she, maybe she was wet. Maybe she had gas. Maybe whatever. And 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 it could help if she's hungry. Feed her and all that stuff. Right. Um, but would it help to feel her pain? Well, you know, in your example, maybe it wouldn't hurt. Maybe it just hurt you. But there's all sorts of cases where it gets you into trouble. I'll give you an example from a much older case. My um, my my younger son. Um, I remember this was very upset one day and, and, and I asked him, what's, you know, why are you so upset? And he said, well, dad, you know, I have an assignment due tomorrow. And, and I said, that's not big, I got a whole day. What's a big deal. And he says, I was supposed to start working on it six months ago. And he was freaking out. And me, oh, this is my big weakness. I freaked out with him. I, are you kidding me? You know, you got, uh, and, and I would got really upset and, when I come and, and finally I kind of, you know, shifted a bit and I said, yeah, well, you know, I love you, Zach. I revealed his name. Fine. Um, I love you, Zach. Uh, I care about you. Let's solve this problem. And, and he was freaking out. I was calm. And in general, in relationships, you want to love the person, you want to understand the person. But if, if I go to my partner and I'm anxious, I don't want her to get anxious. Mm -hmm. If I'm sad, I don't want her to get sad. In some way, it would just multiply my problems. Often what we want to do in a relationship is we want to establish a distance that enables us to help and care about the person. And every therapist knows this. No therapist would have, have a client who bursts into tears because they feel so lonely and then start being caught up in waves of loneliness themselves and start crying and saying, I need help too now. Said, no, you want, you want to understand it. You want to care about it. But you also want to sort of help, which requires that sort of emotional distance.